Hi friends, I'm Crystal Bessie with the Louisiana Farm to School program. This month's Louisiana Harvest of the Month was so vital to the early settlers of our country that they may not have survived without it during those harsh New England winters. Today, they're every part of our autumn celebrations. It's winter squash. The indigenous people of that time taught us all that we know and love about pumpkins, squash, and gourds. This is Chenier Farms, where they're gonna squash our curiosity on how this crop is grown, harvested, and prepared into a cornucopia of treats. Winter squash and summer squash are members of the cucurbita family, also known as the gourd family, which includes other crops such as cucumber, melons, and mirliton. There are many common varieties of the cucurbita family that grow in Louisiana, like Hubbard, acorn, delicata, butternut, and spaghetti varieties, and their looks are as different as their names. The name squash came from a Native American word called ascuta squash, which translates to mean eaten raw or uncooked. We're here at Chenier Farms in Opelousas, Louisiana, and I'm here with Betty and John Chenier. They're the owners of the farm. Thank you very much. Thanks for having yes. us. Thanks for being here. I would love to know how you got into farming. Well, we actually, we had three boys and we wanted them to know how to grow their own food. And we started growing our own food. I was growing my own food from my parents. We. Uh, you know, we, we want to know where the food is coming from. And we know where we grow, that's where we eat. Yes. And it's been a blessing for us to do that. And we got a little bit bigger, and then we expanded the Red Steak Farmers Market. It was the best thing that could ever happen to us. And, and we've been there for, what, 20-some years now? 25. Wow, yeah, that's it's great. It's been a blessing. And we've yeah. met so many wonderful people out there. That's great. Would you say that you're growing a sustainable way, or how do you, how do you manage your crops? On your farm? Yeah, we grow on sustainable. We try to do it the natural way. We, we don't try to use no harsh chemicals, you know, and here in South Louisiana, we got to use some type of chemical, but it'd be very, very mild. Yeah. Because we out in the field, we, when we harvest them, we, you know, we eat. <laughs> right. Because uh, yeah, I was telling the people, I don't have to go and buy vitamins. I just eat the leaves and I got all the vitamins that I need. Yeah. <laughs> the nutrition, you know. Right. Well, this is great to hear. I can't wait to go out into the field and see some of these squash you're talking about. Yes, of course. Let's take Let's a look. Go. Did you know that winter squash is actually grown and harvested in the summer? It's true. In Louisiana, squash seeds like these are planted in the spring and summer. The fruit are picked when they're fully mature and the skin is turned into a hardened rind. The rind is inedible and it acts as a protective coating for the squash. This allows for a long storage and that's how we get to have winter squash in the winter time. Oh, Betty, tell me a little bit about the varieties you grow here at Chenier. Okay, Crystal, right here we have the uh, butternut squash. It's a favorite. Um, it kind of like take, takes the place of the uh, sweet potato when the sweet potatoes run out. Okay, these are the small wonder spaghetti squash here. The old uh, traditional kushas, which you can cook sweet or savory. Yes. And, uh, they're really good. People like them for Thanksgiving on their uh, menu. And now you have the three different acorn squash. This is normally the typical one that you see. And these are the carnival. They're uh, actually sweeter than the uh, regular acorn and this here is the golden acorns. Wow, those are yeah. beautiful. So pumpkins may get all the glory at Halloween, but these won't be the same pumpkin that you're gonna get in grandma's pumpkin pie. So did you know that canned pumpkin is not actually a pumpkin like you get at Halloween? It's a squash that you find in canned pumpkins, kind of like this kushaw that we can uh, turn into a pumpkin pie. This is my favorite to eat as a pumpkin pie. Yes, they are great for yeah. pies. If you buy a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, they're more for decoration and they're gonna have less flavor. A little bit more bland, they're also gonna have less flesh inside. Well, we've learned a little bit about squash out here in the field. Let's take it to Judy and see what she's got cooking up in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Judy Myhan from Louisiana State University and I can't wait to tell you 
What I know about how good winter squash is for you and how to cook the squash, the seeds, and the flowers. These squash that are in front of me are rich in vitamin A, potassium, and vitamin C that you need every day to stay strong and healthy. And in addition to that, the seeds, the flowers are good for your digestive system because they have healthy dietary fiber. One of the things that I really like uh, about squash is that sweet flavor. And I like to do, I like to cook them in ways uh, that concentrate it, like roasting. But one of the challenges that I run into when I'm cooking squash and when I'm teaching my students how to cook squash is that it does have that hard outer layer. So what I like to do is just cut. See, look, I can hardly do it. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Okay, so now it lies flat on the, the surface and it's easier to cut. However, I have another trick and it's even better. And that is, I'm gonna poke some holes in this squash and then I'm gonna put it into the microwave for about five or 10 minutes, depending on how long it takes it to get it a little soft. It'll soften it, it won't cook it all the way through. It'll soften it enough so that it'll be really easy for me to cut. This is gonna take about five minutes. I just got this spaghetti squash out of the microwave oven. We're gonna lay it on its side like that and then just poke it a little bit with the knife and then cut right through it. So you saw how hard it was for me to cut it before and now I just cut it right. Look how nice. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm using this fork to uh, take the spaghetti squash, that's why they call it, because it's ribbons, it's sort of noodle-like. Some people like to use spaghetti squash like you'd use pasta, but that's not really my preference. Yeah. I prefer to do yeah. just My a, husband like his with just olive oil, sea salt, and coarse black pepper, but yes. I like the marinara. Oh, you like to put a yeah, marinara like, on yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So butternut squash is one of my favorites. One of the things that I do is soften it up a little bit in the microwave oven and then cut it in half. And then what I do is dice it. Uh, so I have some uh, butternut squash here that I'm just gonna dice, toss with a little bit of olive oil and put in the oven at about 400 degrees in a single layer and roast for about 25 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And this is the end result right here. So notice that it has some yeah, nice caramelization. caramelization on it. Squash blossoms like these right here are considered a delicacy. And the good thing to do is to go out in the morning and find a few of these male flowers and pick them. You wanna make sure that you're just picking the male flowers because the female flowers are the ones that have the squash on the base. And you don't wanna pick the squash, but you want to leave enough male flowers so that pollination can take place. Some people will fry these or maybe even, we were talking earlier about making them into a little quesadilla by putting some cheese in the center and then baking it like that. But I'm going to keep it simple today and just saute them. And they're delicious like this. It's simple, it's quick, it's delicious, easy to do. I took the seed middle out of the squash and put it in some water. I have a strainer here, and what I'm gonna do is strain this mixture of water and seeds and some flesh yes. into this strainer. Then I can pick the seeds out, and that's what you do before you roast them. I roast mine with a little bit of oil, salt, and pepper, but you know what? You can put them right on a cookie sheet and roast them at about 350, 400 degrees yeah. uh, until you can actually hear them pop. pop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you've done that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to pour this in here. And what you'll notice when I bring it back is that the seeds have floated to the top, so it makes it easier for me to take them out. And uh, I'm going to be putting them on a baking sheet and roasting them. There we go all kinds of wonderful things that you can do with squash. And now let's see where Crystal is and learn more about the farm. So tell me, where can we find your products? 
uh, every Saturday we're at Red Stick Farmers Market in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, yeah. okay. A great market to go to. We are diversified and uh, vegetables, fruits. All right, so once they purchase your, your fruits, your squash at the farmer's market, how, do, how can someone store that the best way? Well, it's one good thing about winter squash. They hold up for three, four, even five months. I've had them hold up. Yeah. Put them in a cool, dry place. You can put them in a fruit basket on your bar or on your table. You can put them in a utility room. Just a cool, dry place. Yeah. You know, kind of like your bananas. Mm -hmm. um, and they're beautiful on display. You can leave them there for a couple months. Exactly. So it's a double. <laughs> it's a double. <laughs> it's a win-win thing. Yeah. Exactly. Well, John and Betty, thank you so much for having us out at Chenier Farm today. This is a great time to learn about winter squash and you've taught us so much. Good, good. I'm glad, yeah, you were able to come. The Louisiana Harvest of the Month program showcases a different Louisiana-grown food each month in Louisiana communities. We hope you will join us in tasting Louisiana this month. <laughs>